Okay, guys, let's do something pretty quick, pretty easy. We're going to control a VFX spawner device, which essentially is a device that allows you to do Niagara FX really easily, and then you get to control it with code. So we're just going to walk over this way, and we get this lightning bolt that comes down, and then a little fire starts. So that's it. That's what we're doing. It's simple, but this is a very effective way to make something happen in your game that uses Niagara FX. Okay, we're inside of UEFN, and I'm going to show you that we need three things to make this happen. Well, I guess four, because we're going to need a place to do it. I've used the Shark Island. I love using these little pre-made assets. They're kind of cool. The only thing you have to do is actually organize the outliner, because Epic developers leave them a total mess. But anyways, what we've got here is a trigger device all stretched out with the idea that the player is going to walk through this opening. You could do this in other ways, but that's not a bad way to get things done. The spawner is right here. We're expecting them to go into the house because that's where some stuff is. Maybe you could put a collectible along the way or something to, you know, sort to force this but no matter what we essentially just need a trigger to make the vfx happen so let's go over to this spot here where we have not one but two vfx spawner devices vfx spawner devices live inside of the content browser and then all you have to do is type in vfx in the search and you'll get a vfx spawner we're not going to use the vfx creator we want the VFX spawner. You take that, just drag it into the scene. You'll be good. Now, there's a couple of things that we want to do to these. And the first thing is rename them. So I've got my fire one named VFX fire. Always rename your devices. Don't ever forget. You'll just trust me. This is a good practice to get into. Your VFX lightning is here. So that's the lightning that comes down and the fire that's going to start up right after. So these two are well named in here. We've also got our trigger in here. This is going to be our lightning trigger. So it's a trigger device. We call it lightning trigger. The rest of it is all just the normal stuff that lives in here, except for our game manager, which we are going to create next. But first, we better line these two up again. So we want them to be on top of each other because when the lightning comes down, we want it to start a small little fire. Now that we've got the layout done, let's get some verse code going. I've already created my verse code, but you may not have. So to do that, you're going to go into your verse explorer, right click, add new verse file to project, and that is going to open up the create verse script window. Inside of here, we're going to call this game manager, I don't know, v2, because we're just going to recreate this for you guys. So I'm going to hit create and save selected because I changed some stuff. And that will make the verse file here. We'll double click it and that will open it up. Now, the first thing you need to do, get rid of the comments that are in here. Only noobs leave these things in. Gone. Also get rid of these prints. When you get rid of the prints though, it's going to make this little squiggly on the equal sign, which is kind of a pain. So we're just going to go block like that. And essentially that just tells the code not to do anything and gets rid of the squiggly. So we have three devices to hook up in our verse file here. So we're going to go editable. So we do this with editables, meaning that we're going to be able to access them from the verse device that we put on the scene and set them up to talk to them with verse. Our first one is going to be our lightning trigger. And this is a trigger device, just like that. So we're going to copy this here equals put on some curly brackets and that is going to instantiate the device here in code. So we create the device name lightning trigger instantiate it as a trigger device. Super simple. We're going to do two more. We're going to go editable. We'll go V FX lightning. And this is a V FX spawner device. And again, we can just copy this move over equals squiggly brackets. And we're going to copy this whole thing like that and then type fire. So this sets up our three devices that we've got in the scene. So we're going to save control shift B to build the verse file. And then we can go back into our scene. We'll just come out a little bit. I think, yeah, I put my other one over here. So we're going to delete that. I'm just going to get rid of that. And we're going to put our game manager V2 by going into the content browser going into creative devices, game manager V2 lives right here. So we're going to take that and put it in the scene just like that. And then we'll make it invisible in the game because we don't want to see this in the game. It's weird. And you can see here our editables are showing up in our list. So we'll go lightning trigger. We'll set that to the lightning trigger. That's why we rename our devices all the time. Otherwise, you're just going to get lost because you'll have a bunch in here. So our VFX lightning and our fire lightning. Bam. That connects everything up that's in the scene to our verse device that we are going to make right now. Save, up into verse, 
let's make some stuff. So let's make some stuff here in verse. Now, the first thing we want to do is do some stuff in our on begin. We want the trigger device to trigger the lightning strike. So to do that, we are going to talk to it by saying lightning trigger, and we're going to get the triggered event because triggers get triggered. You know, that's how it works. We're going to subscribe to that. And we're going to say on lightning triggered. You can call this whatever you want. This is what I'm going to call it. Get rid of the block. You don't need it anymore. Now it's going to be squiggly because we haven't created this function yet. So we we'll go on lightning trigger. This a trigger takes an optional agent. So maybe something triggers it. Maybe nobody triggers it. And you know, you may want to check for that. So what we do is we want to set the variable name as agent, whatever you want, really colon question mark agent, right? And that's what sets up the type to be an optional type because it might come back false. It might be, there's no agent that just triggered this. And uh, instead it, it, it might be a thing like a car or something like that. I don't think cars can be agents. Guards can be agents. Um, characters can be agents kind of thing. We don't care. We're not paying attention to that, but we just need to put that in because it gets passed in by default. So when the trigger gets triggered, we want to say to the VFX lightning, you know, I should know right here, we actually have to do one more thing inside of our lightning, which is and fire for that matter. So we're going to select these either in the scene or you can select them over in the outliner. And we're going to make sure they are enabled on phase none. We want them to be off. We don't want them to be doing anything from the get go. Otherwise, they'll start automatically. So we're going to make sure both of those are set to none so that they're disabled by default. Okay, back to verse. Okay, so inside of on lightning triggered, we're going to say, hey, VFX lightning, can you enable? And that's what will set off this VFX or this Niagara effect immediately. It'll start it up, whatever animation is. In this case, it's lightning. Then we're going to sleep. So sleep is an interesting function. And that means that what's going to happen is it's going to have a pause, but we can't do this because this is not a suspends. Actually, I got to do this as well. <laughs> see right here, this, see this, it's failed. The, the server for verse has failed. So it's not actually telling me any problems that are in my code. So if you ever have that happen, just go ahead and save it, close it, and then go back to your verse explorer reopen it up because sometimes the verse server fails or it crashes. It's a known bug or a weird thing. It doesn't really matter. Just close it and open it up again. You'll see we've got a problem here with sleep. The reason we have a problem with sleep is because this isn't set to suspense. So go suspense just like that. If this seems confusing to you, uh, don't worry. We're going to sort it all out. Now, here's the next problem that you're probably going to come across. I've set this function up to run off of the trigger. We can't do suspense on a trigger. So let's take this back out. And the reason I'm doing this is because you're going to come across this kind of stuff. You're going to want to do things and you're not going to understand. So instead of doing something inside of the triggered call, which we rarely want to do, we usually want to call some other function. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say trigger or we'll put start lightning effect. And this one we're going to pass nothing into, but this one is going to be suspense like this colon void equals and you're done there. Now we just have to call that. So we'll say start lightning effect right here. Now you notice that the brackets actually have uh, red squigglies on it. It's because we have to spawn this. So we go spawn like that. And then we tab that over because tabs really important. And the reason we have to spawn it is because the other one is the suspense and it's an asynchronous activity. So asynchronous means that it runs at the same time as the main thread. So this is sort of a side thread. OK, so we're going to have that sleep and then we're going to go fire. Um, yeah, VFX fire enable. So that's going to start up VFX. It's not fire lightning. Who noticed that? I was like, you did that all wrong. VFX fire. OK, so VFX fire, we're going to enable that. And then we have to do one more thing. We're going to sleep again for a second just to make sure that the lightning effect has finished. And then we'll go VFX lightning uh, disable. Otherwise, what will happen is it will loop and it'll keep on going over and over again. We don't want that. We're just going to disable it, get rid of it out of the scene. And that's that. So that's going to run one time. 
So every time we hit the trigger, it's going to cause the lightning to go off. It's going to make the fire go big. And uh, let's give that a go. So we want to save this. Control Shift B for build. That builds the file. And uh, we'll just double check. We'll make sure that our Game Manager V2 has everything hooked up. It doesn't. The VFX Fire is not hooked up. So we'll rehook that up. It has to hook it up again because I renamed it. And then uh, these two are set up properly so we can push all of our changes, save it, and let's see how it goes. Okay, we're in the game. Let's uh, run over our trigger. And look at that. Lightning goes off and there we have a fire. So that worked out really well. It's perfect. And that's how you control your Niagara effects or essentially the VFX spawner, which then creates whatever Niagara effect you have. And you can use custom ones as well. We're just using the internal ones that are in Fortnite already. Very handy, very useful. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.